real real tour was with Genuine. Wow. And it was his first tour. That was a post Pony? That was Pony. That was Pony. That was the first tour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a Budweiser Superfest. And it was uh it was him, Aaliyah, Drew Hill, Mary J. Blige, um, <laughs> Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh my god. <laughs> it was the tour. <laughs> I'm here with the legendary Dave Scott. Dave, it's an honor to have you here. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what are we munching on right now? There's some chips, and it's from Trader Joe's. You know, they good. Yeah, they yeah. do get down. And then we got some finishing salts here, too. I heard you like to get down with food. Oh, you don't understand. You cook? Right? Oh, yeah. It's my thing, upon things. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you always cooking with, like when you were a kid, or is that like a new thing? Yeah, I know how to make something out of nothing. Mm. Yes, I can make a turkey out of just rice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you grow up with nothing. But uh, yeah, it just it starts from that. Just just trying to create stuff, and I like flavors. I like to taste everything, and it's it's hard to pick a genre of food because I like fusion. I like to mix Spanish with you know with Korean and you know different things like that, just because of the spices and the flavors. What'd you grow up eating in, in the home? Like, what, what did your family cook? Soul food. Now, what defines soul food? Soul. <laughs> <laughs> you put your foot in it. <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's just a way that, that it's cooked. They're very heavy-handed, I should say, with spices. Mm. So when it comes to flavors, it's like all the way on the, the, the borderline. It's on the edge of, like, too much. Okay. Then you got, you know, you got really back in with some hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> That's soul food. But no, really, uh, it's uh, uh, my family's Creole mix, and so it's really like a Cajun style, and those flavors are all like spicy. When I say spicy, I don't mean like spicy, like hot, spicy, flavorful, like uh, abundant spices. Right, like know? rich with flavor. Rich with flavor. That, yeah. Yeah, I can say that. So it's it's... Like that. That's I'm like that too. Like whenever I'm making grilled chicken, like I love like starting off, put lemon over it, put garlic powder, you know what I mean? Put the rosemary sea salt, roast it in with some bell peppers, you know what I mean? Half steam it, half fry it. So it's like crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. Mm -hmm. Put that with rice and beans with some pico de gallo sauce. You know, I got these finishing salts here that my boy put me on to. Uh, garlic basil sea salt I really like. Um, smoked sea salt. Mm -hmm. Like I just, dude. It, it's not the same. Like, I, I had want to it tone, on everything. I had to I put tone it down. on like fast food even. Yeah, everything. I, I had to tone down my salt, you know, when you get a little older. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but. Standing at the podium, got to wash my sodium. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's the bar. <laughs> but no, it's, I, I mean, it's, oh, by the way, when you put that lemon in, put the lemon in last because you don't want the lemon to cook. You want that crispy lemon flavor when you squeeze it on. Oh. I'm just trying to tell you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, do that when we cook tonight. Okay, yeah. save the lemon for the end. Yeah, the end. It's like, even if you're cooking with it, just squeeze it last. That's, it's so good, because it got that lemony pop that you want. Now what's your I like lemon and chicken soup, homemade chicken soup. Just squeeze a little. Oh. How do you like making your chicken? What's your favorite way to make it at home? Uh, I like chicken wings, mm. and I have like 28 recipes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you like the variety? Yes. I like variety. And the, the best way I like them is to bake them. Yeah? Bake them. I love fried chicken, but I love to bake chicken. It's, all, it's just natural juices. Yeah. And, and it just soak in all of what you marinated in. I feel like it comes out smoother altogether. Yeah. Like it's it's not chewy. Like I feel mm -hmm. like it's more evenly cooked when yeah. I bake chicken. Oh, I like to like put it in, like uh, mix it in all of the seasonings, put it in foil, close it, and cook it that way once, and then open it and then embroil it. Then ah, it gets the crispy. Just to give it that little, uh, that little, that crispy, little crispy edge. Kick. Yep. Chip time. Man. <laughs> <laughs> what, like, what's the one kind of food you can't go without? Would it be pasta? Spicy seafood pasta. Yeah, seafood and pasta. Yeah. You mix them together, I'm marrying. <laughs> it is, that's it. It could be a dude. Let's go. <laughs> More than soul food, even. Yeah, Seafood because because um, you you can put those those flavors in it, 
and and uh, and the seafood and just pasta is just really good to me. Yeah, that's really really good to me. I, I, I'm addicted. <laughs> yeah. When you travel overseas, do you have trouble finding what you like, or do you just eat? Everything? No, pasta is everywhere. Right. Yeah, pasta is everywhere, and um. <laughs> you eat her pasta. She's gonna eat the cable. Um, no, I don't have a problem eating. I just. Uh, it's hard to try everything. I, I got to know what it is, mm -hmm. you know, before I try it. But it's not hard to to eat, no. Yeah, I, I like. just eat chicken. Oh, when you, like, you I don't fuck with beef. I mean, I'll have it, but not really. Like, I you don't eat, eat seafood? Not really. Bro, I am I think there's so much change in my life, and I'm okay with it. So much adventure everywhere else. The food, to me, is like my sense of comfort and control. Mm. Like, I like it exactly. That's why I even bring my own salt with me to restaurants sometimes. It's like, yes. I want my rice and my beans and my chicken and my fries, like, exactly. <laughs> the, like, I don't even look at menus. I was talking with my girl about this the other day, and she was, like, taking her time looking at the menu. And I'm like, I, I don't even understand what that feels like because I know what I want. I can walk into any restaurant. And I'm just like... This. <laughs> yeah, right. Without even looking. I'm sure you guys have a plate that has chicken, right? Great. I'm sure you guys have some form well, of rice. That's, it's like, that's the same way me. I, but it, it can be, the, you know, stuff on the menu. But if it's a salad, I literally would just order sliced cucumbers. Just give me cucumbers. Yo. And then yes. just give me cucumbers. Uh, can I have some lemon? And I salt and pepper. And I, that'd be, that's like popcorn to me. Uh, you know, that, that's a, uh, <laughs> you know? Uh, like a fatouche salad. Yes. The, in that train, it's just diced tomatoes and cucumbers with lemon That's, and pepper. It, yes, and I love it. That's the only kind of salad I like. like I've gotten a Greek salad like so... and said, no, could you not put lettuce? They said, That's most of the salad. I said, Just give me other stuff, chopped. Yeah. <laughs> lettuce doesn't give me any feeling. <laughs> it just feels like I'm eating water. <laughs> like, That's you all know? you're eating. Water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> water with a little sustenance. <laughs> um, how's your health doing now, bro? It's. I'm I'm actually glad you asked that. It's it's so much so much so much better, and um, I'm in in a big realization form because you know going like just going through it and working a lot and mm -hmm. and everything. You really don't go to the doctor as much as you need to go as a person needs to go, and and from unfortunately being. You know, in the predicament I was in, if if you don't know, I um I had a brain hemorrhage, and and, and I lost memory, the ability to walk, uh, for two weeks straight. But I was um I was down for at least seven months. Wow. You know, and what, did it happen uh, just like in one night? Like you just? No, it happened day. over time, but I didn't um, notice it. See, I wasn't going to the the doctor or anything, and I was drinking so much. So and it was like numbing every pain yeah i was like okay and then we were going through the the pandemic and everything so everything was depressing so and, and <clears throat> it really kicked in um I, I lost my baby sister oh man and my family we're close and you know i have all sisters and i'm the oldest i'm so sorry way. to hear that man That's... and i just was on the downfall but you know i'm sober 10 months now congrats and uh i'm very healthy and uh, I found out a lot about my body, you know. I've, I've gotten tested for cancer, negative, but the test hurt. I had to get a, a biopsy. <laughs> Don't ever get it. No, never. Uh, and they actually get, um, get bone marrow out of, your, um, out of your hip bone, and you're not sleep. And they numb it while you're awake, but they take the needle and stick it in in every area all at one time. So I'm, you feel all of this shit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put this uh, on the enemy. And I was, I was like, I, 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 and you feel it when they suck the bone marrow out of your bone. You feeling it? Look, <laughs> right, right here. And so you just laying there like a newborn, and they just going in. Now, did it hurt afterwards too? Did you stay in pain? No, you're totally numb. But, but afterwards, it's like it. a couple of couple of days. You can feel it because you're walking. And your, your hip is flexing. Wow. But doing all of that, I just, you know, notice different things about my body, different things that I, I should eat and shouldn't eat. I, I drink more juices and smoothies and veggies than I, you know, used to. But um, I still season things like I want to. It's yeah. just, you know, you just got to pull back a little bit. 
It's like sometimes we're too busy driving that we forget to stop and get gas, right? Like we're on go, 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 must achieve, must accomplish the next project, the next movie, the next <laughs> thing. They're like, oh, I feel fine. <laughs> until you kind run of. out. <laughs> and then until you don't. Yeah, right? until you don't. Yeah, it's like a, maybe making a transition from us being reactive to being proactive, right? That's, yeah, that's the thing. I don't, I don't shun the, the fact of being just... Just like a Sonic the Hedgehog, just a go, 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 go. But you just have to kind of stop. When you start first starting off, there's no pace. There's no pacing yourself, especially if something, if you accomplish one thing and other things are just thrown at you. Right. So you did you do this music video, and it's like, whoa! Every other artist wants you to do their videos. It's right. like, oh, there's no stop. Right. You just you say know? yes. You, you just, just say, say yes, yeah. and you're just going, just going, just going, and. Me being in the position that I am, if I, if I can go back and change, I wouldn't change nothing because I love the go, 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 go. But, you know, um, now you just you got to find moments to just get a little pace, just even if it's small. And I started finding them years ago when I traveled. I do all my stuff, and then you know I'm gonna take these these days off, and I'm gonna take them off. I'm enjoy proper this city. days off, proper days off. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's still hard because I'm thinking about what I got to do then when I get back to work. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's a marathon, right? So it it, it's because that's the thing. Because because really, if we do the good job that we think we're doing, we're only gonna get more opportunities. Yes. So best case scenario is more work keeps coming. So it's not like a, I feel like we're perpetually saying, oh, but after next week, things will calm down. <laughs> oh, no. that's, that's like a choreographer saying, okay, we're going to do it one more time. And, and 10 times later, like, just one more, one more. And, and, no. It's only crazy this week. Next yeah. week will be It's fun. never no one more. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. How did you get started in all this, dancing professionally? Honestly, it's just... Just hobby, you know, just watching TV, watching people dance, trying to mimic stuff, and and was there was there a moment where it went from being hobby to profession? Yeah, that was a surprising moment because to me the hobby was a profession. To me, like if I did, if I battled somebody, and it's like, oh, uh, you know, I'm not getting paid for it, but. That was a climax. It's like part of an identity. It was like, yeah. But were you taking classes or or like? Oh, there was no class yeah. when I was coming up. <laughs> no, yeah. that's why you know I tell everybody take advantage of this stuff because the people that I looked up to, like Pop and Pete, Mr. Wiggles, and you know Skeeter Rabbit, there was no classes. They were just still you know they were battling and the moves on. <laughs> yeah, 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 just still performing. But and and I'm I'm looking up to you know Michael Jackson and you know Nicholas Brothers and stuff like that. It's, and just watching TV and stuff just made me just want to move. It was just like a move thing, like just- It was natural. Just natural, just, yeah. My mom cleaned up just listening to Motown, so she vacuumed and just, I know every every ad lib to every Motown song, so. It was just, it was just, um, just, just a little hobby, just like outside playing with the homies, that's, that's Do you all think you were born to dance, or do you think you were influenced to dance because of like your mom playing music and stuff? I think it was a combination of both. Yeah. I was born to dance and it was a uh, a big music influence around me. A big I and I think it's a, it's a it's a black family thing. It's yeah. just it's just music they it's, they are they always listening to something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah even if you don't want to hear it it's, it's like man, I am mean, so tired of this song but you still bounce your head too. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's um it's a cultural thing. I think it was yeah, definitely I was born to do this yeah yeah now when when was your first time getting paid to do something with dance first time ever because at some point did you ever work like at a uh, like a burger joint like did you ever have like a regular job yeah i worked at mcdonald's before you did I, yeah i lied about my age i was only 14 i lied and said i was 15 <laughs> yeah they didn't put me on the register i was a little black boy <laughs> so they, they thought i was gonna steal i was on nuggets and fries oh man mm -hmm. i loved it and I used to work at a Checkers back in the day. You know, rallies oh, yeah, and Rallies and yeah. Checkers, yeah. But they didn't have the screen to tell you the order. 
So when people would go through the drive-thru and say, oh, I want a the hamburger, whatever, number five, you have to just memorize it and start working on a sandwich. And then the next person comes through and orders. There's no computer with like printouts of like order Did one. Did you order get two. fired? No. Yeah, oh, for <laughs> sure. They got so mad at me. And then I was like, I'm done. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what about your first time getting paid to dance? Um, the first time I got paid... Professionally or just got paid? Professionally, not like a bet with like the friends, but like an oh. like industry job where like you got hired. Professionally was uh, when I left school and I went on um, a little tour, like opening up for, uh, you know, for an artist. And one of the kids dropped out and I was in Utah and one of the kids dropped out and I was just at a, at a club and I just naturally just battled. I was in school. And I battled. You were in high him. school. No, I was in college. Okay. And I, and somebody just, just asked me, "Do I want to finish a tour?" I said, "What?" I said, they just you saw learn? you in the club, and they said, "I like the way you move." I was we kicking. Need... I was kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you know, I'm, I'm I'm like new out there, new face, and I'm six four. So they're like, "What the?" Heck? And I was I was hitting. So yeah. it was like, "Who is this?" Yeah, I was I was I was showing up, and um. And they said, can you learn choreography, can, you know? And yeah. I said, of course. And that happened, and, I, and that was the first time I really got paid, paid. And, wow. And so just job. from never, from not working at a dance job to just going on tour, they naturally yeah. just found you in your environment. Naturally found me. I, I just went out one night and just went off. And uh, one of the guys, his name was Tweet, he left the, the group and... I, I filled Open in. the door. I, yeah. I, I, I said, hell yeah. What a moment, right? I dropped out. <laughs> I've been <laughs> dancing ever since. <laughs> yeah. What did your family think about that? They hated it. Yeah? Yeah. What were you going to college it. for? I, I was in there for uh, basketball. I had a, um, a scholarship, but uh, I hadn't really gotten my major major in mind yet. Right. So it was just all, it was all uh, sports medicine. Okay. And... Um, and I ended up leaving, but then I, I came back and I got my associates in. Uh, okay. Yeah, in business, but. but you told your mom, did you ask your mom to leave school and go on tour, or did you tell her you were leaving school to go on tour? Oh no, I called them from the tour I got <laughs> after I left school. <laughs> you had already done it. <laughs> you yeah. were on the tour bus. If you're like, yo, guess I what? Was, <laughs> yeah, I was out, and uh, my mom was mad, but it was more so my grandmother because I was the only one to go to college. You know, I'm coming. So they were hoping, like, oh, wait, Dave's gonna be the one to take us to that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I was, the one, I was the one in a different way. Yeah, <laughs> so, it was good. And it then, how good. did you transition from being a dancer to a choreographer? Well, that was quick because I'm I'm tall, you know, so it wasn't too many people to to dance with for one. But I I learned how to dance by watching, so. I always changed stuff and I always created the moves and what I think should go here or what I think should fit in this pocket. Yeah. And so I just start doing stuff on my own and just just creating and and just dancing for for no reason. Then I, I was asked to teach. I I mean, I couldn't teach. I thought I could teach, <laughs> but I was going so fast and nobody got it, but that kind of sparked the whole choreography thing because I was teaching, you know, some kids that, you know, nowhere near industry. It was for church. Right. So, and it just kind of sparked me to kind of, you know. Because learning how there. to teach is different than being a great dancer. Yeah. You can choreograph all you want until you have to teach it to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, your choreography is great. Show me. Ooh. <laughs> you know? That's like, you know, being able to cut your own hair, but you can't cut someone else's, but... Right. You know, it's just a, it's a different thing. You know, it's a certain finesse you have to put in to the teaching part of the choreography part. Now, you said it happened quickly. Did you want it to? Were you more interested in being a dancer and being, like, the man? Or were you more interested in, in creating? No, I loved dancing. I But I, I, I was I'm more a creator part. But I wanted to dance my stuff more so. Hmm. Uh, but I love doing other people's choreography, but I love doing my, st my stuff. Yeah. Because when I'm doing their stuff, sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, they should have did this. 
<laughs> I feel that way too. Whenever I work on other people's projects, I'm like, that's great. Yeah, yeah. That's I dope. just rather do it my way. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's dope. Why you didn't move? Finish that yeah. move, right? <laughs> well, why didn't you do it the way I was gonna do it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so you realize that, <clears throat> and forgive me for the for the ignorance. Like, around what what era is this when you start choreographing? I was like around. You remember Immature, the group? It's like, uh, it was like, um, like Marcus Houston. Are we talking like 90s? Are yeah. We talking? Okay, it was okay, like, okay. that's, I started, I started choreographing for them. So it was, it was like early 90s. You started choreographing in the early 90s? Yeah. Dude. Early 90s. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. That's like right when I started dancing, it was like early 90s. My first, my first real, real tour was with Genuine. Wow. And it was his first tour. That was a post pony? That was Pony. That was Pony. That was the first story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a Budweiser Superfest. And it was uh, it was him, Aaliyah, Drew Hill, Mary J. Blige, um, <laughs> Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was the tour. <laughs> the tour. That was, that was my first and last tour I ever danced on. Really? As a dancer? Yeah. Did you get to meet Aaliyah? Of course. Yeah. What was she like in person? Incredible. She was incredible. And she, it was, it was just, everybody was so young and just, just jumping around, just having fun. It was just on tour. It was just a, a whole little away from home tour vibe. Yeah. And yeah, she was an incredible person. Super smart. Yeah. Super smart. Always thinking about the, the artistry, how she's going to move and all, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody learns a lot from dancers. Trust me. All these artists, a lot. Dressing. How to you know the the whole character divide? I, I tell people that that the dancers are like low key, so influential on so many layers, right? Mm -hmm. Sure, there's kids now getting popular on social media, but even just like position wise, dan like a major artist will trust their choreographer more than a director. Yeah, like I've seen it on set where they they hire a director for a music video, but the dancers, the artist is like, let me ask the choreographer what he really, you know, yeah, they, yeah. They, they trust that opinion more, yeah. right? It, it's um, it, it's like the the underappreciated important influence on entertainment. Yeah. It's it's because that's that's the that's who they see all the time. That's the trust factor. It's it's that's their confidant. And you help give them the actual <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have to open up to you. Like yeah. they in the studio looking like a frog and you gotta yeah. <laughs> you gotta turn them into a princess. It's like, you know. Yeah. So yeah, so it's a different kind of kind of uh faith hold that they have on the choreographer. Yeah, and the creative director. That must have been so interesting experiencing just the culture in the '90s, right? Especially because like that's like at the height of like the beginning of the golden era of hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. And just all these things that now are cemented as history. Yeah. Right. Like I'm a big hip hop head, but I was born in '88, so I didn't get into it till like the early 2000s, and then went back and like now I can I can recite all the lyrics to "Reasonable Doubt" by Jay Z, but I didn't hear mm -hmm. it when it came out. You know what I mean? Right. So like I, ex I experienced that afterwards, looking back at it, right? Yeah, yeah. How was it in that like, cause, I don't know. It, like, I don't even know the question I'm asking. Just cause I'm such a fan of hip hop. It's just like that <laughs> era must have been so interesting. Like, what was let your experience give, like? Let me give you a a, a, a story. When Bone Thugs and Harmony came out, it was oh, spam. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony came out. It was a cassette player. We had the cassette. Uh, me and my boy Mike. The cassette broke. We refixed it, <laughs> tied it up, taped it, whirled it back around, played it, and then we turned it around and reversed it to see what they were saying. If they were saying like stuff demonic. Oh, backwards, oh yeah, yeah. Backwards. And it was. It was like crazy. But. Back to the story. <laughs> we used to just rewind it so much, that's how it broke. Just rewind it just to learn the lyrics to, yeah. to everything Busy was saying. Da, yeah. da, da. So we we, it, we were fanatics when it came to all the hip hop. And and I'm an R&B head. Yeah? Uh, R&B for life. <laughs> that's just that's just my, my music. So it was, it was all about learning every single word to mm -hmm. every song. Every song that you liked, it's just... 
I'm that way too. That's how I learned English is memorizing lyrics. Oh, really? Like I can't talk to you if like a great song is playing on the radio because in my mind I'm singing all the lyrics. To it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, I have to be like, hold on, pause. <laughs> all right, what were you saying? You know, because in the back of my mind, like it's, I love that. Like especially when a new album comes out. Although I I memorize more hip hop lyrics than R and B, but the albums that I do like, if I like it at all, mm -hmm. I like it all the way through. Like. Uh, I listen to the same albums like a million times. Mm -hmm. That's more of my thing. What about you? Do you? Yeah, I I, I get stuck because um, new stuff comes out and I, I just don't like it. I just want to <laughs> I just want to hear all the old shit. It's just I'm over here. That, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, when trap first came out, it had to be the dopest trap song and kind of like commercialized yeah. in order for me to get into it. And it had to be a sample in it. You're right. That that I understood in yep. order for me to like it, but everything else just sounded the same. It's just uh, ye, 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 ye. I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know. So I'm the same way. I'm just I get stuck. I rather even teaching. I rather teach some old stuff than than newer stuff. In your opinion, not what you think other people think, but what Dave thinks, purely from your perspective, hmm. in no particular order. Who are like top five rappers for you? <laughs> All the way through. Uh, Not what you think I'll think, but you, for you, that do something for you. <laughs> and we just talked about this. <laughs> Andre 3000, Ooh. Uh, uh, Busta Rhymes, Ooh. Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, uh, Tupac. Those are my top five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I think Andre 3000 is underappreciated. <laughs> He's super sick. Like, I almost feel like there needs to be a whole series breaking down his lyrics. In, in, like a new, there should be like a Netflix show or something where you just take Andre's lyrics and make little videos out of them. Because there's gems upon gems I just upon sit gems. and learn all of his stuff. I'm just like, what, what is he saying? I remember back in the time when the only signs we had was Pickett. Picket signs. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, the way he just words stuff. I'm and going, he'll just what? be so subtle about it. Yeah. So it'll sound like a throwaway line, <laughs> yeah. but it's like a triple entendre. And you're like, what? And then he'll disappear for a few years and then yeah. do a feature. Yeah. Body it. <laughs> and then just play his flute out of an airport. It's like, <laughs> that is flute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Get sick with it. Sick. Um, Jay, I would say for me, Jay is my favorite rapper, but Kanye is my favorite artist. Mm -hmm. But I think it depends on what I'm extracting from them, right? Kind of like a juicer, right? Like when you, when you, when you have like a juicing machine and you put the vegetables in and you, and you extract right. it out. It depends on what I want to get from it, right? Like Jay-Z to me represents, he's almost like a motivational speaker, strategist. Like if you listen to his early albums, they're not songs you can bump in the club, most of them. He has some radio hits. But they're like the codes to success. They're like, mm -hmm. he's saying, here's what I'm really going to set out to do. I'm going to build the business empire. And yes, I kind of rap. And he said it on album one, and he just keeps on taking it. And now he's at a point where his new singles aren't even about the radio. He's just going like triple entendre every bar all the way down, right? <coughs> but that's one vibe. You, you can't really like make love to Jay-Z music. Right. Not really. That's, song cry <laughs> so maybe you know what I mean right. it's like then other times like if I want to feel like inspirational and I want to be like you know ah, let's take over the world I'll, I'll throw on some Kanye or something like I love mm. his creative production Drake I like because he he was like more lover boy vibe but I don't even listen to it that much maybe if I'm going on a date or something you know yeah Drake Drake is he's, he's a, a sucker for love yeah yeah he's a sucker for love ass but Pusha T I really fuck with I like, yeah, I like all those Pusha T's, though. I like all those artists. But you had, you said top five. Of course, I love Eminem. The, these aren't my top five, but like Tupac is just like, he's like so legendary. Yeah. That I, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like he didn't finish. Yeah. It's it's just, I know today it would be something stupid. Like he, he would have so many different lyrics that just talk about the time. Because he talked about the times. Yeah, He talked about things that he saw, things that, that related to things that we, we, we see and... and we try to overcome and, and things like that. That's why I love R and B. Mm. You know, it's and Motown. I mean, Marvin Gaye. He talked about the times. It was. It's just. It's just things. Just just that's just uplifting. That's why I, I like. That's why I like music because music is, tells a story, and that's why I yeah. like dance. And I tell everybody that 
we dancers, we, we're like what music looks like, you know. So Dude. when we when we express ourselves, it's, it should be like how we hear music. And yes. it, when we see it, it should be, you should feel it like that. Yes. You know? So it's like a translation. And it, it is. It's it's an interpretation. Have period. you ever seen when they take um, like a like a little metal plate full of sand and they put like audio waves through it and it makes shapes? Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? It's trippy, right? Because this is you would think that like triangles and geometry are something that humans came up with, but that's been here before us. Because if you shake yeah. sand the right way, it makes perfect geometric patterns. Yeah, it shows you that even in nature, there mm -hmm. there is a symmetry in beauty to responding to sound. See, that's why Andre be leaving and come back and he's some, he, cause he be thinking like you thinking right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thinking too much. He's like, man, just rap. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But no, nah, yeah, man, I just, I love the industry. It's just, you know, there's some do's and there's some don'ts, but. Yeah, I guess, yeah, you can find challenges and opportunities in every industry right yeah um <clears throat> but i agree i i love it too i love the massive collaboration aspect of it mm -hmm. um i grew up around dancers my mom and dad they both did classical ballet so i grew up around the stage and all that and it just feels regular to me like working on projects just feels like the default yeah. even if i'm on vacation like you said even when i'm resting i get the best ideas <laughs> yeah that's that's when you get the best ideas it's, and sometimes if you don't get it out, it doesn't change. It just, it just gets a little bit more elaborate. Because when I get an idea, it's like it's, a, it's an idea. It's already in cartoon in my head, so it's already like superficial. Yeah. But if I let it marinate, it turns into a whole movie, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's good to just get it out. And what I love about love about the industry, going back, I see. I see, you know, a lot of like hating, like people hating on this artist or hating on this project or hating on this. I look at it as a level of respect. It's a lot of respect for certain things. If you didn't, if you didn't respect it, you wouldn't have that much to say about it, you know, to me, because I've, I've this is how I see things and this, this is the things that get me by and not you know, kind of, because people can shut you down, like, emotionally. Give, give me an example. I'm trying to understand what you mean. Like, if you read all the comments for something that you posted, and then you get down by negative comments, mm -hmm. then that's that's letting the negativity get to you. But right. if I read it, for one, you looked at it and you had enough, you know, gall to comment on it, that means you respect what I posted. Right. That's how I look at things. Yeah. So, like, like when people say it's, it's uh, uh, all media is good media, you know, because you're getting the publicity. I look at the industry like that, the the ups and downs. And so, if I if I hear these negative comments or see these negative comments, then I look at it as okay, it's watched, it's been seen. Okay, that's just like someone like you yeah. or my girl, or you know, someone coming to tell me on the side like. You know what? That was dope. You should do this next time. You should do this next time. So I take all things as a teaching note, and and I also don't read all the comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, think, it's all how we how we experience something. Even if somebody else can mean something as a diss, we mm -hmm. have the opportunity to interpret it how we want to. Yes. Right. Because mm -hmm. some people might think they're dissing you, but you might take it as a compliment. You might yeah. be like, you know what? Actually, I like that. Oh yeah. Oh, you saw that? Oh okay. okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how that's how I look at a lot of things. Because I'm I I've had the 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 blessed opportunity to have people that I respect and that are great, that that's great at what they do before me to actually give me advice or mm. tell me different things like like the great Debbie Allen. I, I, when you get stuck in your creative, like it's like writer's block. You get stuck. You know, I, can, I, I don't know what the hell else to do. And I was told not to beat yourself up. You got to take a break. You got to just just stop for a second. Go for a walk. Go live life a little just, bit. Yeah, the, yeah just let, let it go. Whatever production you're doing, they got to respect that. Just, yeah. I'll be back. 
and then come <laughs> back and you refresh. Yes. And also don't don't ever try to be better than your last project. Mm. Do better and be different. Mm. Just be different. And that's why, like, I don't compare You Got Served to Stomp the Yard or Step Up to, or even Step Up 2 to Step Up 3. What was the first movie you made? You Got Served. You Got Served? Mm -hmm. How did it feel doing that? Incredible. (laughs) Have you ever had some stress, like, you so stressed out, but you loved it? Yeah. Like, dude, I got a headache, (laughs) but I'm getting paid. (laughs) (laughs) My back hurts. But shit, I got a shitload of money. <laughs> it's like, I'll take it for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It's um, it it was, it was overwhelming. But at the same time, all of us, even like creating, and you start choreographing, you just coming up with different routines. Your routines is a movie, right? All of them. Like if you did ten in a month. That's your movie for that month. Yeah. It's just telling the story of your day to day. So I got a chance to really tell that movie. I gave that movie legs. So I got the script. The script says one thing, that's your acting part. Now I gotta make the dance and tell a story in itself. Right. So that that was I love challenges like that. That must have been a fun uh, a challenge, right? To see how you're gonna weave the movements at the beginning of the movie to have an arc, right? So by the time you get to the end of the movie, there's also a movement arc too, mm-hmm. right? And how the char- how much the characters show themselves or whatever, right? It's yeah. Like- and then when you when you showing all of that, <laughs> at the same time they still got to cut some stuff off. Right. So it's stuff on the uh, editing room floor. You're going, no, I got to reuse that. Yeah. <laughs> so you have more footage that you can bring back. Right. And heighten that the next level. What was the difference between, like, when you... Okay, so you created after your first movie, you got served. What was uh, better and different on the second time? The second movie you did, was, which was what, Stump Yard? Stump the Yard. Yeah. The, the, it was a complete difference. Com- for, yeah. Different the, team. The one, one thing that was the same is the way I separated the crews. Mm-hmm. I separated every crew, and you got served, and nobody saw each other's choreo. Uh-huh. I only knew it. And sometimes some of the rehearsals I had them in at the at the studio at the same time, they were just in different rooms. Cuz you wanted the reactions to be real when they're actually going off. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. that's smart. They got mad. <laughs> they <laughs> was mad as hell. But they were actually in different rooms. I I'll run over and choreograph this part, run back, chore- and and you know, I was connected it in my head. So that was the same with you got server and stomp the yard. Yeah. The difference between Stomp the Yard is we were in Atlanta. Everybody was away from home. I had to create this camaraderie with with crews, two different ones that it was more it was more like a brotherhood, more like a fraternity. And they had to mesh together to become that fraternity right. against this one. But everybody was still so brotherly at the same time from the separation it made them more competitive, mm. more uh, competitive against each other, but still but still uplifting each other. But I want to win. Yes. Even though the script says it's, one It's thing. collaboratively competitive. That, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, love, I love hearing that from you because what I'm hearing is that you're not just getting hired just to make moves, right? No. You're make, getting hired to make decisions that will influence the whole outcome of the movie. Right. Yes. So even deciding to have this crew not see that crew, or why you're putting these people together, it's like, okay, dancing is a skill, mm-hmm. choreographing is a skill, yeah, teaching that choreography is a skill, arcing a movie is a skill, and then running a crew to build like bonds is a whole other skill. Because somebody might be a great choreographer, but they yeah. don't know that you shouldn't mix these dancers together because yeah. they're gonna throw each other off, right? It's, it's a whole casting thing. It's yeah. a whole thing. It's yeah. it's layers of, of of mind that you have to put into this. And that's just, the fun part. Yeah. People think the moves are the fun part. No, to me, setting the stage is the, the best part. Mm. And to set the stage, you need you need that actor. You need that character. You need that that wardrobe. You need that 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 presence that's going to create what this script is saying. And sometimes you go outside the script to where you change the script. Mm. You know, so it was just certain things like, oh, new pages. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we got to get this in here. And 
the reason why um, Stomp the Yard was so different, you got served as like street, just straight street. This was collegiate Stomp the Yard. Right. And the the, the fraternal fraternal order order, order is it's like so major that you, we couldn't use things that were similar to the actual fraternities. Oh, that's what I was gonna ask too. So, so, so all those movements, there are fraternities that do things like that, but you kind of took that influence but choreographed your own, right? Yeah, we had to do our own, create something that none of the fraternities did. So like all of this, n- none of them did that. You know, they, Adding the you tutting know, to it. Yeah, all of yeah. So we had to create that, create, create wardrobe, create the symbols, the signs. So we made, we made them. You almost that. like made a fraternity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did and you guys use real fraternities for the names in the movies? Yes. Okay. Yes, they were they were real. Real fraternities, but um, original choreography. Yeah. Put on them. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. The, the, uh, like, what do you call that kind of dancing? What stepping? Okay, oh, it's just stepping. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now, were all the dancers people that already knew how to step, or just dancers that you taught how to step? Uh, majority of them knew how to step. Okay. Yeah, and the ones that that didn't, they lied. Probably, but they, they looked good when we start rehearsing. Okay, so you actually specifically asked for steppers. Yeah, we, we auditioned. Okay. So, you know, they came with it, and I, I auditioned a, a step routine. So. Now, how would somebody learn stepping if they're not in a fraternity? Are they just stepping classes? I feel like that's more of a culture thing. You have to learn that, like, in the real... Well, it's a, it's a, it's, there's classes, but it's a rhythmic thing. Mm. It's just like if you're listening to a song, you know every beat. Right. It's now, now make that music with your, with your body. So that's how I learned, and and I was just doing, you know, a step makes a certain sound. Right, like every ba- every kick drum sound. is this thing. Every yeah, snare. slap slide is make a certain sound. Slide, that's a certain sound. So you like, you just make like uh. Hey. You know, it's just like, and you start playing with it, and then I start getting fast. Yeah. I wasn't calling you. <laughs> they start getting fast, and um, so these dancers that came on, they were just self-taught steppers. Well, some of some of them were in fraternity. I, I hired Chuck Maldonado. He's uh-huh. actually a kappa. Okay. Yeah, and he, oh, he steps phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, so he's he's his finesse is just stupid. <laughs> um, so he's a, a professional stepper. Okay. So you know, coming in, and then uh, Columbus Short, he was in the actually step the show. Got it. Yeah. I mean, Stomp. Stomp. Oh, yeah. Stomp. stomp. Yeah, oh, he was yeah. in Stomp. Yeah, so they actually knew how to step already. Got it. So now I had to create what the identity was for Thetas and what the identity was for Mu Gammas. Mu Gammas are big, stronger, more aggressive. Right. They, they're, they're, they're the oldest fraternity right. in, in the school. Thetas are trying to find their identity. They're mostly like young. They into you know hip hop. They just like you know want to dance. Right. Not really step. So you had so to I consider mixed, that. Yeah, I I created that. Yeah. So like, <clears throat> you're gonna be more the dancing steppers. You're gonna be the more traditional, aggressive. Right. And so just so putting those contrast together. contrast in the movements. Yeah. And so, woo, that's that's the difference between both. It was that's just, sick. It was so. Now, weren't there also main actors in that movie who had to learn? It wasn't Neo was in that, right? Yeah. Yeah, did he? For, for some reason, he knew how to step. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he had to come to rehearsals late because he was working on his album and his uh, tour. Yeah. And he came in and he, like, just that quick. <laughs> just that quick. I think Chris Brown would have got it quick if he was, you know, in the step part. But he was in the, the right. street part, yeah. Now, do most... Uh, artists that you work with already know how to dance or have you ever had to teach an artist how to dance from scratch? Yeah, I've had to teach artists how to dance from scratch, but in the movies, they, they knew how to dance. Now, there's no stunt doubles. There's no stunt doubles, right. Yeah. But when you're working with like um, like a, an actual singing artist on their stuff and they don't know how to dance, how do you start? How do you teach somebody who doesn't know how to dance to dance from scratch? After I finish praying, <laughs> I pray again. Then I get my assistant to go in first, try to loosen them up a little bit, and I take a nap. <laughs> if you're teaching somebody to dance from scratch, do you go straight to just, hey, let me just teach you what you need to know for your choreography and that's it? Or do you actually get them grooving? Like, Well, people unconsciously already know how to dance. Mm. 
when they're listening to their songs or around the house or listen to their favorite songs and they're just, you know, just be dancing naturally. It's naturally come to you because you sing, you sing with a, a tempo, with a melody. Yeah. It's natural. When you start breaking stuff down, you start looking as stupid as they do. Because it's like, you, you just want to groove like this. You start breaking a groove down and it start looking like this. Yeah. Then that's that's not natural. So what I do is I just do natural things and work on the movement, just a performance, before we get to some choreography. Mm. Because if you got the performance, you can always jump back and forth. So just the performance, the vibe, how would you sing this song? How would you approach this? And, and you know, and I'll put choreography to how you would approach it. Right. So, so if you were to walk towards it, you know, to the front like this, that's your choreo. You know, it's like and, an outline almost first. Yes. Yeah. And then, and then let them attack it like that. And then the more repetitions you you get with it, the quicker they learn it. That's dope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to try the salt. Oh yeah, bro, go this one, have at it. Garlic. Yeah, you can just pinch it. Just do it with your fingers. Mm -hmm. Uh, it just comes up. You just got to pull it up. But they got a little take shaker yeah, thing right there. I got you. Oh, they do have a side thing. I didn't even know that. <laughs> you didn't? I've been doing it. Oh, wow. Look at that. I guess. Yeah, you just turn it around. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that Very explains easy. it. <laughs> I, I guess I just like doing the... <laughs> the little... <laughs> the Emerald Lagasse. Bam! <laughs> When was the last time you was in Brazil? I've, I've been there once. I haven't been back since I left for a couple reasons. At first, I didn't have a green card, so I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I left when I was 10. And um, only my biological father is there. And my mom and my stepdad, who I grew up with, we all moved here. Wow. So I'm just closer to them. And then I got a green card, and I honestly just wasn't that close with my biological father. Mm -hmm. And I think I just found us out at a seminar recently that I had like some withholding uh, anger issues about that. But which I'm working through in therapy, but I feel like subconsciously I just like I wanted to go, but just didn't, you yeah. know. And now I actually do want to go. I've actually reached out to him. We've been talking more. Um, so hopefully this coming winter, when it's winter here, it'll be summer in Brazil, you know, because the seasons are flipped. Oh yeah. So I'd love to go back and visit. But um, I don't have. I left when I was ten. Moved to the Midwest. Grew up in Chicago, and just moved around my whole life. Went from Brazil to Cleveland to Kentucky to Chicago. Grew up in Shy, then moved to New York, then back to Shy, then San Diego, then back to Shy, then to LA. I love Chicago. Me too. I love the, just the, all the great artists that come from Chicago too. That's why you like Kanye. Oh yeah, I don't listen to him before <laughs> college dropout. Like, I don't care what anybody says. I, I love his music. It's like, it does something for me. Yeah, he, he's a great producer. Mm-hmm. It just, I guess, I guess great art has to be kind of selfish to the artist in that it has to really be expressive about how they're feeling. And if they're really honest with that expression, then mm -hmm. somebody else that relates to it will really relate to it, right? Because that's, like most people either love Kanye or like don't fuck with him at all, right? Mm -hmm. It's like pretty polarizing. And just for me, I'm not idealizing him like he's some perfect person because I know people in this, you know, but just the art that he puts out, Mm. I, I could go my whole life just listening to his albums. Like I, I'd be, I'd be fine. Like they, <laughs> they give me, you know, classical references. You know, like with the orchestration. They, he has heartbeat ones. He has like emotional ones. Just the range from like 808s to Yeezus and everything yeah. in between. But he's not my favorite rapper. Right. I consider him more just the artist. He'll well, just that's, bring that's, a, a different thing. That's the same way I feel about Drake. Drake is a actual poet to me mm. right like the stuff that he says the way that he uh he verbalizes it is is really poetic you know he's a great writer he's a great writer and but he's not my favorite rapper you know it's just it's just i think as a rapper you have to really also believe in their character like as a person it's almost like a politician you almost have to vote for him like yeah, like I like I, I vote for Jay Z, so I <laughs> fuck with him. Like Tupac, like yeah. as a man, mm -hmm. I honor him 
therefore I fuck with his raps. Yeah. You, not that I don't honor Drake, but you kind of know what I'm saying? It's, uh, I yeah. It, it, uh, like a rapper to me is almost like a superhero almost. Like they're, they're representing the energy of like I did whatever it had to, to, to get myself here. And But yeah, but Drake is very poetic. He's very poetic. He has these lines that are mm, simple. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, okay, I, I can get into that. Kind of what feel. kind of movies are you into? I love sci-fi. I love um, superhero movies. I think when they first came out, I, I teared up a little bit. The first Transformers, I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah? Oh, yeah, that was the best thing. I, uh, me and my best friend, he's not here anymore. Uh, rest in peace. We loved Transformers. We loved the... the did you like it before all that? Were you into the comic books or the TV show and stuff? Every all, all comic books, everything. Yes, and so when they came out with, with movies that looked like something, it was amazing. Okay, because a lot of people that like to read stuff before the movies are always snobby about it, and they say, "Oh, the book is way better," or the comics. Were... Did you feel that the movies were better than your imagination? Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Yes, because it's, it's like it's in your face. Because it is better. <laughs> it's like eight D. <laughs> yeah, well, especially just the way technology changed movies. Like, if you yeah. look at movies in the eighties and nineties, they were conceptually great, but you could tell it was yeah, special that, no, that, that, the the graphics, the CGI, like <laughs> like the Neutron, that sucked. <laughs> it was like the graphics were stupid. What'd you think of the Dark Knight series? Love it. I love the aesthetic of it. I love the cinematography of it. Like, mm -hmm. and grew up in Chicago. Just the way they captured Chicago with it. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times I also like movies because either subconsciously I want to feel that like I'm hanging with those characters, mm -hmm. right? Like I want their energies in the room, and or I love the cinematography, right? Like, yeah, I I love comedies, of course. But I love um, cartoons. I love Disney. Yeah? Movies, yeah. Do you like Pixar movies? I love them. Have you seen Inside Out? I did um, a whole uh, thing at the um, the El Capitan Theater. Yeah? Uh, 3D. The first 3D effect with 3D and live for Inside Out. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. It was sickening. What I a did all the characters and... What a dope concept too, huh? Of, of just incredible. showing how we build our personalities. Mm -hmm. Did you do you see that? Yeah, it's just like the way, you know, it was mm -hmm. building the cores of her personality, and how the lesson was that at the end of the movie, spoiler alert, is not all about just putting a positive spin on everything. That she needed to tap into the sadness in mm -hmm. order to like, be more centered. And I feel yeah. like sometimes we get so caught up in. I'm a very positive guy, but almost like. I hate to say it, but like a toxic positivity, where it's just like, it's just like, no, it's like, like for me, I, I, I see the benefit in things. Like you said, right? Like it's how you read the comments, right? Mm -hmm. Like when I'm in traffic, I figure, well, if I'm in LA and I'm going to complain about the traffic, that's like being on a boat and complain about water or something. It's like, you know where you're at, you know? So if I'm in traffic, I'm going to make it entertaining. I'm going to listen to a podcast. I'm going to call my mom. Yeah. There's so many things one can do in traffic, <laughs> you know? Put on a comedy show. like Yeah. That's the thing, uh, Inside Out, it, everybody just, like, um, just anger. Just thought anger was just going to be just this angry, fire-headed thing. Right. But anger had emotions. Mm -hmm. Anger had had feelings to where it had, it had reasons. It had and, and reasons. Value. Yes, and 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 anger's biggest thing was fear. His biggest thing was like he get upset that this is wrong and that's going to be. But he had fear of that being wrong. Mm. If you look in, into it, so I was. I, that's what I love about it because it makes you just just think. It's like, and then when he starts tapping into those emotions. And, you know, showing it, it's like he calmed down. Yeah. Because that is what's underneath anger, right? It's fear. It's fear. Right. Like, I'm angry you did that because I'm afraid of what that's going to mean. <laughs> this and that and this and that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing with stress, right? If you trace down stress, like, oh, I'm stressed because I have a deadline. Well, what happens if you don't meet it? Well, my boss would be mad or the client would be mad. Or what happens if that happens? Then I'll mm -hmm. lose a job. But what happens if that happens? Mm -hmm. I'll lose my house. What happens if that happens? <laughs> I'll be homeless. And what happens if that happens? Nobody will love me. It's like, okay, so that's mm -hmm. that's the fear. 
yeah. that shows up as stress for the deadline, right? Yeah. You stop thinking about uh, the good things that's going to happen when I'm finished. <laughs> right. It's all what we focus on. Mm -hmm. um, how do you keep your mind right? Do you, um, you said you, you mentioned prayer <coughs> earlier. Are you a very uh, religious person? I'm, I'm more spiritual. What does that mean to you? Um, I, I just, I believe in God. And the religion is a, is a stamped direction to like where where to go as your sanctuary to as in your belief i i believe in right and wrong and reason i say spiritual is because i feel like prayer is healing because of because of belief and the more you strengthen your mind in in a positive direction the more positivity is around you only because you you you're leading yourself in that that direction and you're leaving all that 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 negativity behind it's hard to to just go and be especially being in an industry go through a life with no negative people around you right it's just about how you space out your time mm so, and if you keep a distance and your focus is one thing, then everything becomes distant. Do you get what I mean? So if, if, I'm, if I'm not necessarily putting my energy into pushing someone away, but I'm putting my energy into moving forward, you're not pushing them away, you just, they're still here. Yeah, and then they can choose to go away or not. <laughs> yeah, but you're not focused on pushing or pulling them. You're just yeah. doing you. You're doing you. And then it's almost like also recognizing the responsibility that we each have on our path, right? Yeah. Is that it would be ideal not to be around a bunch of negative people, hmm. but sometimes you can't help it, whatever. You have a, somebody at your home, roommate, whatever, right? But we have to vibrate at the frequency that we want. Yeah. Right? And it's easier said than done, right? But like Very you said, so. but, but, you know, if you can tune yourself into a state of gratitude. And to me, gratitude means that, like, what I have right now in this moment is more than enough. It, and I used to feel that if I was too grateful, I would lose my ambition, <laughs> mm. right? <clears throat> that, like, I have to be thinking, no, but that'll be better when I land that project, when I do that thing. Yeah. But then it's like, it's never ending. There's always a next it's always. The second I achieve something, the second I get to a new level, I'm like, That oh, other thing is old. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm already, I'm used to this. Of course I do this. So yeah. You know. <laughs> but even, even like moving in, in a positive note and like in a, in a very creative note, it's, it's really inspiring and uplifting when you accidentally help someone and you were just being you. Mm. You try to avoid things and they, things that you can't you can't really avoid. Like um, for a long time, I, I I avoided my family. I just I just wanted to be me, do what I wanted to do, and just just succeed mm. on my own and just do things that nobody in my family did. Go outside of my proverbial box and just keep keep going, keep pushing. And I distanced myself for years, years. But they know they knew where, where I was, and I talk sometimes. But after I got sick, I got back close with my sisters and my family, and I didn't realize how much I helped them from a distance without even talking to them. Mm. And then when I'm around, like if I say something, just words of you know aspiration, and just it means a lot. And it just meant a lot because it's coming from someone that they thought was positive or think that's positive and just strong. And I, that's what they looked up to from a distance. Like, he's doing it. He's this, he's that, he's this, he's that. You just never know who, who you're touching in that, in that manner. And you're just pushing forward. That's all you're doing is pushing forward. And you have all these different family that's fans in an in a, in a uplifting way. So I just feel like... It's even if it's the smallest words, it's it's good to acknowledge 
your friends and your family just to even just oh that's that's dope oh i've never seen nothing like that that's really good you should keep it up and it, and it, it means something to to have them feel seen mm-hmm. you know yeah. you don't have to like be there all the time but like when you get a chance to interact with them have that energy exchange to be like i see you yeah i see what you're going for there that's that's awesome it goes that, a long way because that happens on the reverse but it goes too. a long ways to you <laughs> yeah like and when you like, get that 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 back and you're like oh that, that really meant a lot to me and and because you, you go home know. and you go dang you really did <laughs> you, <laughs> you never know? know how people feel somebody might come off very confident like there's things that i'm like mm-hmm. super confident about but like it looks like i'm confident about but on the inside, I'm like, man, am I doing it right? Whatever. And then when somebody's like, hey, I like that, I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's 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 really good, and 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 it's good to to learn how to take um, criticism and learn how to uh, and accept to, a compliment. And accept a compliment. Uh, somebody told me, um, Lawrence Fishburne said the biggest the biggest compliment you can give to someone is accepting the compliment they give to you. So if if you had an amazing dress on and I came and I said, you look amazing in that dress, say thank you. And just leave it. And own it. <laughs> Don't say, so do you <laughs> in that suit. No, accept the compliment that you were given. And I, and, I, and, he, and that that's a compliment in itself back. I said, oh, that makes sense. Hmm. Just receiving just that receive energy. It. Yeah. That is something to be worked on for sure. It is. because it. We you, almost feel obliged to be like, you do too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like when you put it together. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just, mm-hmm. I, I was uh, talking about this with my friends the other day that um, I see receiving as me giving you the gift of giving to me. Exactly that. Yeah. Right? Because it feels good when I give. Right, like when somebody accepts my gift, it feels good. Like if I offer to do something for somebody and they say no, a part of me not is offended, but it's just like, oh, I would have <laughs> felt better if I gave <laughs> right. them this gift and they were like, this is amazing, right, or whatever. Yeah. So when people offer me stuff, you know, obviously unless it's like something crazy, right? If they offered me sushi, I'd be like, <laughs> know <laughs> <Yeah>. me better. <laughs> <laughs> right. Is it chicken? In it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like. Yeah, because I know it feels good to give. Like, whenever I go home, I know my mom likes to give. Like, I'm a grown man. I can take care of stuff myself. But she likes to, like, set this thing and do that and bring me an extra blanket or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, it would be almost selfish for me to be like, nah, ma, I got it. It's like, yeah, because in that yeah. moment, what she wants to feel is that feeling of, of giving to her son, you know? So it's like I'm giving her the gift. Yeah. Of giving that to me, and I try to I try to apply it to other people too, because I actually have never really had a trouble receiving things and I help, have, I have. but I have had trouble receiving compliments for a long time. I didn't think I was attractive until like four years ago. Oh, really? I used to think that whenever, even though I would date people and they would tell me, "Oh yeah, you, you look good," I used to think they were just being nice to me because <laughs> whatever they wanted something or this or that. And yeah. then this one time I was uh, making love and I, I was on psychedelics and I, <laughs> and, I, and I saw myself naked in the mirror and I was like, oh, <laughs> I look all right, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see what they see in me. <laughs> but it Good took time. a while. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, when people are like, you look good, I'm like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Shout out to mushrooms. Um, uh, <laughs> but before then, I swear, any compliment somebody would give me, I'd be like, you're just being nice to me because maybe I'm a nice guy and you want me to feel good about myself. Even yeah. if they told me whatever. And I think the same thing with my work, too. Because I, to me, I judge my work based on my effort. And sometimes I've gotten hired for projects that I didn't fully connect with, so I just gave it like a C effort. Mm. But I'm talented enough that the client won't notice. Right. right? And then the client will be like, oh, great video. But in my mind, I'm like, oh. Right. It's kind of whack, actually. It just, I was busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So now I care more about my process. I want to feel like I'm really in a project. If I'm doing it at all, 
It's kind of like the old uh, sports movies when they say it's not about the score. It's how you play the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I went through uh, a lot of that, like, but like not accepting a job because I didn't feel it. Mm. You know, I, I, I got to a point to where I, I was going like, no, I, I don't really want to do this project because this it was like I turned down movies and... And I just didn't feel it. I mean, and then I start getting down on myself, feeling like, okay, uh, am I acting too good because I, I have a, a small amount of success? And, and you know, I had to talk to somebody about it. And they said, no, you just, you just value what you put out. Mm. You know, and, and, if, and if you're not passionate about it, you're, you're not going to be passionate about the result. Yeah. And if, if it's something that, that you get into that's, not a passion project for you, and you turn it into something, then you've turned it around. But if yes. you just don't feel it at the jump, you just don't feel it at the jump. And I had to talk to someone to to make myself feel better about that because I, I didn't want to feel like... You thought you were being bougie or something? Yeah, bougie and just like, oh, I'm, I'm turning it down. and uh, Like, no, it was like, um, you know, after I did Stomp the Yard, I got approached for, for so many different step in movies yeah right after i didn't feel it yeah well because ultimately they're hiring you because you make good decisions you make great decisions right right they hire you because of your taste right brazi um and like i remember steve jobs once said that design is also what you don't put in a product yeah. as much as what goes into the product right mm -hmm. so if they want to hire dave scott then they trust dave scott decisions of what not to do Right. Right. So technically, mm -hmm. you turning down a job is you also giving them a gift of saying, like, I'm not the guy for this one, because that's still a decision. You still gave them a quality decision of removing yourself from it. That's the way I would look at it. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Right. I wish that that would have came to mind when I started getting down on myself. <laughs> no, I started getting down on myself, and I felt like a lot of jobs weren't start stop stopping coming. And it, like they just stopped, and it was like little small, small jobs, and I was like, okay. And then I felt like I start working these small jobs because I turned down so many big things, and then uh, the big things came out, and they they were horrible. I'm not gonna name them because I know the ones that you were supposed to do but didn't. I yeah. was asked to do, yeah. yeah. I still have the scripts, and I was going, uh, no, this is it's not my feel. And some some friends of mine. Associates know that they, they they did those projects. They didn't come out good. <laughs> did they think it would beforehand? Were they convinced that they were going to be good, and then, or did well, they know going to like, hey Dave, I know I'm working on a whack movie. Like, no, like that. They didn't speak to me about it at all. Um, they didn't even know that I was up for it. Mm. I just, but you know, <laughs> I, I knew, I, I knew I was asked first, and I was, I was just like, I just watched the process happen and watch it come out. And, How and could you tell from a script? Was it just a bad script? Like, I'm trying to imagine why you would turn down something as a choreographer. It would have to be the script, right? Is it just a like? You don't have to say what it was, but like, was it just like a shitty idea for a movie to begin with? Whatever yeah, this project might have been. Okay, when you got served came out. And then, you know, you got, like, Stomp the Yard. Everybody wanted to mix hip-hop with other genres. Like ballet or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is Crossover, fine. Yeah. Which is fine. But the script was, was saying it in, in the wrong manner. And mm. it just didn't make sense. And, and it wasn't making each genre shine. It was like a like force feet in a mixed culture. Almost like they, they saw, oh, this is a recipe. Let's throw in, uh, you know, somebody from the ghetto or somebody from whatever and mix them up, whatever. It's like, yeah, you can't just, you have to actually represent the cultures properly for it to feel right and make sense. Yeah, and that's why I did, um, I, 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 I didn't do it and I was just like, yeah, 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 it was the script. It was the script. You could feel it right away. I could feel it immediately. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's uh, top three? Sci-fi movies for you. Top three. Um, well, you say you like you like superhero movies, but you didn't I like you also say you I like, like thrillers. Thrillers. Okay. Thrillers and. Um, What's your top superhero movies? You said Transformers. Oh, uh, the Avengers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, kind of teared up on uh, Endgame. 
Uh, I love the Avengers. Uh, Spider Man is incredible. What was better, Infinity War or Endgame? Infinity War. Yeah. Infinity War was, was crazy. Best crazy. movie of all time for you? For you? For me? Yeah. No. I'm a I'm a I'm a Shawshank Redemption fan. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. And so I'm I'm one of those that like the movies that didn't do good in the theaters. That's a cult classic now. I'm mm -hmm. I'm one of those. My favorite movie of all time is um, Weird Science. <laughs> I, I got the VHS. Yes. Weird Science. Weird Science. Yeah, they created a girl in their room. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Frankensteina. I, I used to have her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was hot. <laughs> um, yeah, so I like movies like like crazy movies like that. Weekend at Bernie's. Okay. Yeah, stupid stuff. Culture stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm like one of those. What's your favorite but, comedy? Or one of your one of your favorite comedies? Like, shit, like coming to America. Mm, that's a classic. <laughs> yeah. <Dance flick. laughs> the movie I did. No. <laughs> uh, that's yours. She loves dance flick, man. Um, How was it working on that? Hilarious. It was just jokes all the time, every day. Was that your first time working with the Wayans? Yeah, that was the first time. Yeah. And they actually approached me. It's was like, we're we doing a movie about pretty much every movie you've done. <laughs> <laughs> Would you would you be willing to talk shit about yourself? I said absolutely. <laughs> Let's go, Brazzy. You, you agree? Okay. Yeah, you, know, you made made your appearance. <laughs> okay, good boy, Brazzy. Down. Okay. So you have puppy breath. How old are you? A month. <laughs> <laughs> He's a six year old puppy. <laughs> okay, good boy, Brazzy. Come here, sit. Mhm. Mm you get one piece of chicken. There you go. Okay. Good boy. You wait. Comedians, let's talk. Oh yeah. Who do you like? Uh, From now or the past? Uh, I like the past, Martin. I like. Uh, We're talking stand up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jamie Fox. Mm. I like Kevin Hart. Um, Mike Epps. Um. Chappelle, is, I, I, I got to get to him. <laughs> He's like number one. Uh, I love Dave Chappelle, yeah, definitely. We just saw him Saturday at the ball. We were supposed to see him when our show got canceled. In Canada. We were in the front row. Yeah. His new set is incredible. I mean, all his shows are good. Man. Did you hear about him getting tackled a couple days ago? I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody yeah, had the camera. He got stomped backstage. His <laughs> arm was this way. His elbow was inverted. He's lucky he didn't get killed. Broke it. Yeah. Like, he had a knife. What like, was he on? I want to hear the story, the reason he jumped on the stage. <laughs> the, the, did you see Dave's commentary afterwards talking about, like, Buster Rhymes and Jamie Foxx backstage? Like, no. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently, like, after the dude tackled him, like, everybody, all the, the homies were on stage. So, like... Everybody that was like opening for Dave, yeah, and they were all backstage. I saw, I so, saw, um, so um, dude ended up just getting stomped out by like everybody, like, <laughs> like. I saw yeah. Chris Rock up there. I saw, um, yeah, everybody. Was yeah, there. yeah. So <laughs> it's it's trippy, man. Like, I want to know what what his story. And Dion Cole, he he he's got great a too. yeah. I I love him. He got a picture of the dude, and he gonna his uh, caption said, "Well." <laughs> Yo. <laughs> no, like, you got... were you guys at that show? No. no, we were the one like two days before that. Yeah. yeah. But what I love about Dave is like he's like funny, funny, but he's also thoughtful. Like, he's super smart. He's like a philosopher of our time. Mm -hmm. Like he actually makes really important points, even in his old ones. And was it killing him softly? Um, all mm -hmm. of them. Like, there's always some deep point that's like a line that you don't even think you should cross, but he'll walk he'll, that line. Yeah. And he'll say his perspective, and he's not afraid of pissing off people on either side of the aisle, right? No. Like, it's just his perspective. It's exactly it's that. an amazing art form. Yes, I love it. And, and it, yeah, when he came out with his the, the Chappelle show, funny as shit. Oh, my God. He did, he, he, how you just have a... A racist black man that's blind. <laughs> <laughs> Niggers. <laughs> and at the end, why he had left his wife. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he just he just turned so many. I love Ken Peel. We watch, he said yes. watch the whole thing. We binge watch. So Have good. you seen the okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> She's like this is the fifth and the last time. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like how, um, yeah, well, Dave Chappelle started it. Yeah. Like the did. skit part of it and just. Like, well, actually, the, the, the Wayans did with In Living Color. Oh, I never saw them because I saw the, the Wayans show where they were like running the newsstand with their pops. Well, all all of those came from uh, In Living Color. Like well, uh, I never saw the original Living Color. Yeah, In Living Color. That you know, uh, everybody was on it. Jim Carrey was came. Was from, that a skit show or like a? Sketch? It was a skit. It was a sketch show. Oh wow! Yeah, I need to get up on that. Yeah, J Lo was a dancer. She was a fly girl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You you saw Living Color? No, but I knew J Lo was a dancer. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. In Living Color, yeah, they had they it was all that sketch comedy. Yeah, it yeah. was funny. But then, yeah, Dave Chappelle, he, he killed it. He took it to that level. And then when he left, Kim Peel just slid. They, they slipped in, and they came in right at the height of production capabilities going up. It yeah. being cheaper to make high-quality stuff. Yeah. So they just took that formula and just mm-hmm. killed it. I love how they can act uh, so differently, mm-hmm. right? I just heard this comedian do a hot take, and I'm not saying I agree with it, but I'm going to just say how, how crazy his take was. He was saying that Denzel is not that good of an actor. And I was like, hold up. But then he was like, <coughs> he was like, well, if you're measuring it by range, mm-hmm. how far does his range go? And I love Denzel. He's one of my favorite actors. But he was just saying, okay, if we're talking about acting as range, then it's like, I don't know, Key and Peele, they do, I'm not saying they're the best, but I'm just saying like they got range. From a, comedi- from a comedic standpoint, they got range. Um, but then again, not every actor I like has to have range. Like Adam Sandler plays the same guy in every movie. Basically, <laughs> and I still love Adam Sandler. You know what I mean? Right. So it's I mean, like, but you got to know your niche. Yeah. That's just the thing. You got to know your li- niche. It's, it, I, I now. I mean, I hear you about Denzel. But, I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying but, this is somebody else's point. They're talking about range. I'm, Denzel's powerful just because he's Denzel. Like, yeah. But I've, you know. But then again, like, do I value range over just performance? Like, do I care that he didn't play a crazy different character in a different movie? Or does it matter that he just played a great one in this one? On the one that he chose. Yeah. That's the thing. You, you choose what you're going to be incredible at. <laughs> yeah, like, like, is a dancer only a great dancer if they can do a wide range of styles? Or what if they only do one style, but they're the best at that style? Right? Then they're an incredible dancer. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, then, so then range isn't the only measurement of ability. No. It is a measurement, but it, it doesn't it, mean you're better just because you have more range. Right. Because it's a, it's a lot of hip-hop dancers. Like, you call them hip-hop dancers. Right. Urban dancers. Or, you know, mm-hmm. they can just do jazz and, you know, and, and hip-hop. But they're on stage with a, a bunch of ballerinas. But they got enough ballerina background that they can stick it. Yeah. For stage, right? They're a phenomenal dancer <laughs> because because they, they can act the part. Because a lot of dancing is acting. That's what that's when you casting, you're looking for that character, right? And that's what I tell dancers all the time. And uh, we were just teaching. I said your your fingerprint because everybody's fing- fingerprint is different. That's your identity. Your fingerprint on this on this entire game is your character that you bring to the table. You can be the cleanest person in the world, and you guys are, look identical as far as cleanliness, but you dance different than that person because you are in it. That's your, your personality is in it. So that's what's going to squeeze through. So never lose your character because that's your fingerprint. Maybe even learn to lean into it more. I think sometimes yeah. as artists, we become insecure thinking that I'm not like everybody else. But that inspires the, the, the creator. I'm telling yeah. you, I want to change up some things sometimes yeah. because I'm like, I like how you did that. It was something, you look just like that person. It's just as clean, but it's something you did because it's coming from inside. It's yes. just like, it's like, what's that? What were you thinking when you did that turn? You it, know, like it might not even be thing. what you thought. Maybe you thought you wanted somebody that was big or whatever, but maybe you get somebody who's more subtle and you're just like, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. that works better. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love yeah. it. But that's what that's what you got you to gotta take away from this. Your, your character is something. Nobody can be you better than you. 
You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Check one, two. <laughs> Nobody. And so don't lose that in the midst of trying to be a part of this or be better than this or, you know, be, you know, always be the best at what you're going to be, but to be the best you. Yeah. And clean. And maybe sometimes I, I've seen myself get confused with that because there's a part of me that also just loves exploring and learning other things, right? Skills. So I go and try a bunch of things artistically to kind of figure out who I am. And I feel like most of my career up until a couple years ago, maybe I'm just being over hard on myself, but I feel like I was just executing the job. Yeah. But the my approach felt like it didn't say a lot about me. Maybe it did and I just didn't realize. But now I think I technically understand filmmaking that now I'm starting to have my opinion on it. Yeah. There's a difference mm-hmm. between just doing the job I was hired to do and actually saying, no, let's do it in mm-hmm. black and white. And actually like bringing like uh, choices of what not to do, right? And saying like, what is me? Yeah, that's the Who thing. am I as an artist, right? Mm-hmm. Like what's that choice? Oh, and... Uh, by the way, don't nobody's a better you than you. That's uh, rest in peace, Don Camelot. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you but, know, because we hear these things when we're younger. Yeah, just be you. It seems so simple, but it takes a while for you to come back around to that original. <laughs> yeah, you know that feeling you get when 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 you're working on a project so long, like you're dancing, and the the dance become rep- repetitious. It's mm-hmm. like I know it. Okay, I got a show tonight. This and this, and it's a thing that comes out of you on special nights or special times and you don't know what it is and you dance way better than the last show and it's it's just that thing it's, it's something that comes out and you just like feel better you feel a certain way you're on that stage and you kill it and then somebody comes up to you like you smashed tonight you wow, it was amazing that feeling comes every time i work on a project i get st- it gets stale to me because mm-hmm. once I do the moves, once I choreograph it, once I put it out there, everything's old. I want to change it. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm always changing furniture. As soon as I arrange the room, I'm like, mm, let's repaint it. Let's do something uh, yeah, else. I want to. I want to <laughs> change it. I just like, uh. But and but I see the movie. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's done. That's already on film. If I go to rehearsal, I can see the same routine. It's something that stands out that makes me appreciate it every single time I see it live. Mm. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh, oh. And that's the, that's the feeling you got to have because you're giving that feeling to the audience. Mm. When you get out there on that stage, that feeling you feel when you're like, oh, I've, I killed it in that show, you're giving that feeling. You're exuding that energy to that, that audience because if I see it and I'm going, damn it, I just saw this shit yesterday. It was amazing. Yeah. I saw the same thing. Why didn't I see that part yesterday? You get what I mean? It's right. just you start noticing and start picking it apart into it. because it's you you you're overwhelmed with excitement and that's the that's the feeling that draws me into creating because mm. I always want to present that feeling. I always want that wow factor. I, I love that feeling when you're on set or you're on stage or whatever and you guys find that magic moment and I everybody's just like, right now. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that is that feeling. I, yeah, you I know, live for it. I was just talking about this on another interview about one of my favorite moments at a concert, especially like a big concert that has like opening acts. Because you know, like when there's like an opening act, they don't use the full stage. They just kind of yeah. use like the half ass front part of the stage. Or whatever, yeah, they right? give you that little bootleg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when the main artist is about to go, right? And then the house lights go down. Yeah. Boom. Everybody goes like, ah! And yeah. the first note. Yo. Sometimes I watch YouTube videos of concerts just to hear the opening. What's the first minute of every concert? Because that's such a decision. It's dark. <sighs> they just wait. Mm. I love it. There's like when we, did, when we did Janet uh, for that the, um, tribute to her brother. Okay. And it was like all of the choreographers, we, God, all eight of us, we were just sitting there. When we had to pop up, it was the VMAs. After Michael died. Yeah, and the the one we did screen. We uh, uh, we had the uh, the lifts. We all danced on, on the bottom right before it was time to come out, and we were just screaming. We got masks on. We like what? What? <laughs> we got to hold our positions because it's about to rise up. We like ah, y'all ready? You ready? You? It's the I cannot describe how. I think we almost passed out because it was just like, ah, ah. Yeah. it lifted up and we were superstars. Like, oh. Going up the toaster yes. on the stage, yo. Oh. <laughs> With the slow lift, like. Mm. Oh, it was a slow lift, not the pop. Yes. 
Oh, the slow lift, and like, you're just like, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And see, and that's, yeah. and that's necessary for art. You have to actually feel it on stage. At yes. some point, you're not um, acting excited. You're b actually being you're excited. Being you're actually excited. giving yourself permission to feel that feeling. Because mm -hmm. if you don't own it, they won't buy it. When you perform, do you do you talk, like, yell out stuff to, like, uh, people you're dancing with? I'm, I'm not a dancer. You're not a dancer? No. Uh, I just work with dancers a lot. Yeah, I yeah. yell out. I'm yeah. like, ah, you ain't ready? What? Let's go. Ah, yeah. You're going to mess up on this part. I'm, I talk shit. <laughs> it like, would be so funny to have, like, a BTS of a tour where there's, like, hidden mics on the dancers. Yeah, like they do in football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, yeah, I was. I, I love it. I love it. I love to hear other people talk shit, too. Did you ever uh, meet Michael? That's the one thing I didn't. Mm. He was at uh, an award show. Uh, he was all the way on the other side. I was busy on this side trying to get everything together. So he told someone he loved my show. I ran around there to meet him. He was gone. Oh. I was working on a show at um, Nickelodeon in Florida. He brought the kids to the set. I was working on the show called Taina to the set. They was like, Michael Jackson's here. I ran from my dressing room around. By the time I got there, he was gone. It's like he oh. disappeared. <laughs> it was like, like Dave, Dave is coming. <laughs> 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 I never got to meet him. Never. How's Janet? Incredible. Yeah. She's incredible. Yeah. It's it's you know that soft spoken. Oh, she mm -hmm. be key can. She's she's a woman. She just yeah. And um, when I was working with her, we doing all, all the moves, and she she doesn't do like side rehearsals like I'm I'm gonna be an artist and just come teach me and then I'll get in. She's rehearsing with you. Mm, she's with the dancer. She's with the dancer. Going hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going yeah. hard. And she, and I'm in there doing it and she was like, no Dave, um this that the hand goes here. This and I said, oh really? Oh shit. <laughs> I got Janet correcting me. <laughs> I got it. But yeah, I love it. And she's yeah, she's she's cool. That's so awesome man. Just mm. um it feels like you're such a part of like the seeds of culture, like these iconic uh -huh. moments. Like so many of your instincts and decisions imprinted what we call culture for the last couple decades. That's amazing. Yeah, that's that's, that's amazing for you to say that. That's, thank you, man. Right? <laughs> right. Like, isn't that trippy? Just from you just wanting to do it as a hobby. Brazzy, leave it. Curious doggy. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I just think that's awesome, man. Like, it came yeah. from just things that felt good to you, and then you influenced projects, yeah. movies, artists, songs, award shows, and then everybody in the world's like, oh, I love that show. Part of what they're saying is, I love what you felt and had an instinct to decide to do. That's trippy. Yes, yeah, trippy. It's wild, you said that. bro. Wow. Like. <laughs> wow. Imagine if you hadn't um, gotten picked for that first tour. Would you have stayed in college, you think? Or if another, were you just ready to leave at the first opportunity? I wasn't even thinking about it. I, I probably would just still just play ball. What yeah. if you hadn't gone to the club that night, right? Like, I don't know. See, I like movies like that. That just shows you like the different. <laughs> <laughs> the different outcomes, right? Outcomes, Almost like butterfly yeah. effect kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah sliding doors. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's like, man. It's the, the chances of you going to that one night and that one person who was supposed to be on that tour leaving. What if they had just stayed? Right? Like all these coincidences had to happen. I think it was just destiny. Destiny. Yeah, it was. It had to be. Because it was, it was on my mind so heavy that it was not even a second thought. Okay, like yeah. immediately. That's how I felt when I moved to LA. I just I decided like overnight, like I was in Chicago. It was like a Tuesday, and I was like, I should move. Then like that Wednesday, I started driving, with like one month's worth of rent, no job lined up, and I was just like, it just felt right. I was just like, ah, I'll figure. Yeah, I go. It just and my sister was like, well, you don't have a job lined up and everything. And I was like, oh, I've, if I'm broke here, I might as well be broken in LA. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I'll run into somebody. And then uh, I met Tyga my first week and started shooting these videos. And it was just like uh, off of randomly meeting his producer at a Drake concert in Chicago. 
What? I took my sister to see Drake because we love going to hip hop shows. That's like me and my mm. sister's thing. We go, we went to Kanye, to Jay, to a bunch of people, and um, we were in the audience. Like here's the stage, you know, like going all the way around. We were here, and I saw a guy on the other side of the audience, but directly across from us, who was like on his BlackBerry, looking like not interested in the concert, you know. Mm. And I was like. He looks important. <laughs> yeah. And this is before I moved to LA. And I just went all the way across and I introduced myself to him. It turned out his name is Jess Jackson. And he was producing the opening act named Tyga. And then that's how I connected with him. And then when I moved to LA, I hit him up and I said, yo, I'm out here. And he was like, oh, come meet Tyga tomorrow. And just because I was here, and then I shot a free video for him. And then it went on World Star. And then I didn't get paid for it. Then I shot a second free video. That also, when I was started good, and then I was basically out of money. I was like, "Yo, I need to pay my second month's rent." And then he was like, "Oh, do you want to come on tour with me and Diddy and be our videographer?" And I was like, "Sure." <laughs> That's how I paid rent month two in LA. But it wouldn't have happened if I didn't show up here broke, right? Because I had to just, just be take here the leap yeah. and be willing to just show up and and do it. Yeah. What advice do you have for up and coming artists of any kind? It could be a dancer, a choreographer, whatever. Somebody who's like who knows they have something to give, but maybe they're shy or they haven't like fully put themselves out there yet. What? Well, there, I, I don't feel like anybody that has the, the, the drive to do something knows their ability if they don't jump into it and do it. You know, it's like if you're doing something for yourself and, you, and you're looking and comparing it to stuff that you're seeing, that's not a, 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 a true identity of what, who you are. You have to put yourself out there so it can be seen. So I think you have to take the leap. To me, I'm from here. I'm from California, mm -hmm. you know, born and raised. I, I'm, I think it blows me away from people that move from another state to move here to make it, you know, because, oh, man, I'm from here. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's like uh, it's kind of inspiring to see someone that just take that drive or take that leap and just come. But my my advice to... To people that's just trying to do something, it's easier said than done to to say put yourself out there, put your stuff out there. I say take the jump. The answer is always no until you ask. That's what my grandmother always told me. Mm. And that's pretty much just saying, if you just stand behind and be like, oh, I wish I would have just did that. I wish I would have said that. Or I wish I would have just walked up to him and you just missed that opportunity. Do it. Might as well ask. Might as well. I, that, I just, that's why I just took the lead. When they, they asked me to go on tour, I left. And I don't have any regrets about, about leaving school. You know? I tell everybody at every interview. Like what? I, I I just you know would like to be a Laker one game, <laughs> you know, just to say I made it to the league. <laughs> but you know that time has passed. My knee hurts. <laughs> what? I love what you said though. Just about you got to put yourself out there, and you have to at least ask. Yeah, I think a lot of times we're afraid to even ask for what we want. And it's like, if you don't ask, it's definitely a no. It's a no. I think most people think that there's so much competition to getting what you want. In reality, not really, because most people don't go for what they want. So the thing that you mm. want, there aren't even that many people going for it. They might say they would like to have it, but actually going for it, there's not even that many people really showing up. Mm -hmm. You know? Wait, I... There's a lot of people when... Well, uh, we had MySpace when Facebook came out. We watched Social Network. Yeah. And, and everybody's like, man, I had this idea for, you know, a social platform a long time ago. It's a difference between having an idea and every single thing to make that idea come to life. Yes. So if you have an idea and every single thing to make that come to life and then you're sitting back and not asking the questions... That's stupidity. Yes. It's like a waste of, of, a of opportunity. Waste. Yes. That's how I felt about this podcast. I'm like, I, I run into so many amazing people. I'd be stupid not to do a podcast. Yeah, podcast. you have everything to make it happen. It's yeah. Like, um, hello? Could you come by? Yeah. <laughs> Period. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm.
I love that, man. I'm so grateful that you're able to come over here and, and, and share share the wisdom, share the story, God, I bro. Can't. I mean, the biggest part was the Mexican food. <laughs> 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 well, next time you're hungry, we'll have another conversation. <laughs> no, I'm glad. I'm glad you had me over, man. It's like, yeah, and I like I love all the interviews and. Um, you know, I hope you make me look good. That's <laughs> well, I'm not a magician. <laughs> <laughs> well, abracadabra. <laughs> Dave Scott, thank you so much, man. Where can people find you? Well, um, I'm on every social platform. Uh, the official Dave Scott, and that's um, TikTok, Instagram, everything and else, <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> everything else. My Venmo is. <laughs> no. uh, you get the final phrase of the podcast. The final phrase? Yeah, you get to end it. Whatever, whatever it is, it's, it's on you. Uh, final phrase to inspire. Or to not, just whatever you want to say. Yeah. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> just made up words. <laughs> uh, well, really, it's just simple. Health is wealth. And if you're sick, you suck. <laughs> Dude. That was a vibe. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs>